In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at the two envelopes that require a note input, and we'll begin with just a really basic example inside of the polysynth. So here we have this sound. So it's a cool sound, but let's imagine that we want to control like the sync amount or the sub amount or something, and we want a nice long attack. Well, I'm already using my filter envelope generator and I'm already using my amplitude envelope generator. So I can't go in and use either of those. I would need an additional third envelope to use. The ADSR is identical to these two envelopes we have. It works on a percentage base. And so you kind of just have to set this one by ear. So if I go in and I add a bit of sync, let's add a lot so that we can later adjust the depth could also go and maybe increase the sub amount and you know take something like this bring it up take something like that bring it up maybe even increase the resonance a little bit we can now add a nice long attack and we can watch and see a little ball appear as it goes through the envelope so, so that decays a little too fast So you obviously know how this works. It's a little extreme. So the nice thing is we do have a depth control. So we can kind of scale this back. Or if we go backwards, the parameter is actually going to go the opposite direction. But you can see how we've now scaled that back pretty considerably. Then I might go in and increase the amount on the sub I want. So that's kind of an aggressive sound, but you get the idea. Let's go ahead and just get rid of the ADSR for now. And instead, we're going to look at the AHDSR. So in this case, we have attack, hold, decay, sustain, and then release. So with, the, with this one, you obviously are now setting your time by a milliseconds. You have a little curve control here, and then you also have the hold parameter. So the hold parameter is just how long is the value going to hold after it makes its way all the way to the top of the attack here. So let's go and let's set this to control something like the balance here. Have it increase the sub amount and maybe bring this back or something. So what we'll be able to do is hear how this is working. We're going to have the hold last for like a whole second. So it's going to get up to the top. It's going to stay there before coming back down and reaching some kind of a sustain level. And then we also have our release. So you can see how it's holding, comes back down, and then releases away. So same deal as before. And there you have it. So the great thing about these is they can also then be modulated to any other modulators you have. So imagine having a macro control and it's controlling a bunch of additional effects. You could then route that to control that knob and have that move in real time. And I'll just show you what it would look like. I'm not going to go through and set that up. At this point, I feel like you guys can definitely figure that stuff out. But I could go here and set it to the full range. Then it's going to go up and follow. And again, I have brought the depth back a little bit. But that would be something you would definitely want to consider doing and could easily get away with. So uh, loving these things, especially on your instruments, so easy, straightforward to use. In the next example, we're going to uh, set this up onto a hybrid track. Here's the situation. You have this pad sound looping over again and again. You want to bring on a couple of uh, envelopes to control the cutoff of a filter and the mix amount on the resonator bank. You could, if you already had an instrument playing, you could steal the notes from there. But in this example, we're just going to set up something uh, completely independent of that. And I'm going to start again by going and converting this to a hybrid track. In this example, I'm going to add a blank instrument track here. And we're going to go and at the beginning here, I'm going to bring on the note receiver. 
There it is. And I want the source to be coming from instrument two. And we can see that we are then getting a note brought in here. All right, perfect. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go in and I got to set this up. I'm going to bring on here my, we could use either one. Let's just use the ADSR because that's a little bit easier to do. And you can now see that we're getting that feedback of the note and of the envelope that's being triggered here. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to have it control the cutoff. Maybe we'll just add a touch, a touch of resonance because we already have the resonator bank. This is also going to control the mix here. We could set up different envelopes to one to control the mix, the other to control the filter, but this is fine. I like that. So cool. Or we could do something like plucky. Let's see if we can set that up. So you can see how this is working. I'm already having a lot of fun playing with it. And it doesn't just have to be a filter and a resonator bank. It could be all sorts of different things. So this is one to experiment with. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, you would just record the notes in here. I could even just go in here. It doesn't matter the note that we're playing, obviously. I could just do it, you know, like this. This is obviously very boring, but it gets the job done. And then we could watch this happen here in real time. And you could set other modulators to be controlling other things in here. So one thing that might be interesting would be to change the frequency. Maybe we could even have that set up here. So this is a little extreme, but it gives you the idea. And even then set up almost like a little bit of a side chain action. And this is all without using the note side chain. You almost have more control over the envelope that's being generated this way. And the nice thing with the AHDSR is that you could go in and actually then even add curves to take things a step further.